Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos and today I'm on Carrollton Avenue in Holland Street in the Holland's Market neighborhood and we're going to talk about the oldest surviving public market building in the city, Holland's Market, behind me. Before I get there though, I just have to say another quick thanks to everybody who contributed to Baltimore Heritage last year. Um, we met our fundraising goals, which is really extraordinary. Um, thank you. Uh, as the director of a small nonprofit organization, I would also be remiss if I didn't add, um, if you contributed last year or if you didn't, uh, you don't need to wait till the end of the year to contribute. Thanks so much. All right, let's jump in. Um, this building dates to 1864, but we're going to start our story with two piano-making brothers in 1829. Um, Joseph and Elias Newman, um, those are the brothers, who went on to found Newman Brothers Pianos, two of which ended up in the Smithsonian. But back in 1829, they wanted to start a market and they had a friend um, named uh, George, uh, let me get his name right, uh, George Dunbar, who was a banker uh, who offered to donate land to them, the land here. And then they got the city to give them permission to uh, start a market on the condition that they use their own money. The city was okay with it, but they weren't gonna put anything in. Um, and in 1829, the Newman brothers built the first market shed uh, here at Holland's Market. Things went well until 1838 when a tremendous windstorm blew the market to pieces. Undaunted, the Newman brothers rebuilt quickly. Um, and then in 1864, the city decided that things were going well enough uh, that they contributed $23,000 to build this wonderful two-story um, Italianate brick head house uh, to join the market sheds behind it. Um, and things were going well. Uh, there were, uh, right around the corner, there was the B&O Railroad's Mount Clair shops. It had over a thousand employees. Um, Hayward and Bartlett's uh, foundry was nearby, as was the Winans Locomotive Works. Those were bo both big uh, uh, employers. And the market itself sort of reflected that in its early days. It had uh, tr it was for truck farmers in nearby counties, bringing their produce, the lettuce and tomatoes and corn, um, uh, basically acting as a grocery store for these workers. In the 1840s, nearby Union Square got its start, um, bringing it, uh, ushering in a new residential uh, building boom. In 1809, Baltimore and Frederick had completed the Baltimore Frederick Turnpike. That had been a big help. In 1816, the city had it annexed this part of Baltimore County. That was another help. But in the 1840s, this new residential boom ensued, um, and that really brought a change to the market. We saw not only the meats and fruits and uh, uh, seafood, we saw vendors selling things like chinaware and cutlery and dry goods, things that families would need. So let's take a look and see what's happened over the last uh, 158 years, I think, if my math's right, at the market. It has always been a colorful place. Maybe one of its most colorful vendors uh, was a woman named Mrs. Frances Liberto, who in the 1930s was interviewed. She was in her 70s at this point, had been working at the market almost all her life. She peeled horseradishes and uh, coconuts. And here's what she told the reporter in the 1930s. She said, I can do 50 of these horseradishes while well, you're doing one. I've done as many as 1,800 or 2,000 coconuts in a day. I can hardly imagine that. And she had lost two fingers in a peeling accident years before. Amazing. On the outsides, uh, the street corners were maybe as colorful as on the inside. Uh, another Baltimore Sun reporter uh, reported, um, on Saturday nights, men and sometimes women foregathered to discuss from street rostrums their convictions and opinions and philosophies of life. Sometimes you hear them talk about religion, sometimes politics, sometimes social legislations. Whatever it is, every speaker has a group of listeners, both boosters and challengers. It's a Hyde Park on a small scale. Scale. So pretty neat public speaking here. Um, the head house uh, has always played a public role. Um, early on, uh, the suffragists, the women uh, seeking the right to vote, staged plays here to, uh, uh, to try to further their cause. A team called the Arcadians, uh, who played in the Federal Basketball League, used the second floor uh, to play. Kind of hard to imagine, but they did. In what had to be not one of their better days, they were beaten by a team that was described as a professional women's basketball team who played on roller skates. Not good for the Acadians. Um, in 1904, after the Great Fire, the Maryland Institute College of Art uh, lost its building downtown and held art classes here. And in the early 1900s, the Naval Reserves uh, held training exercises here. Clearly not open water, but they were doing something. On the grumpier end, 
uh, uh, nearby resident H.L. Mankin, the uh, noted uh, Baltimore Sun editor, um, had this to say. He, uh, he chided a young woman who was uh, organizing kids' activities here. He said, little children know how to play and don't need anybody to help them. Well, harumph, Mr. Mankin. Um, things have always been changing at the market. In the 1970s, Mayor William Donald Schaefer ceremoniously ha uh, hammered in a nail, starting a $1.2 million restoration campaign. In the 1990s, a group of residents, uh, again, uh, sparked a revitalization effort using arts as their focus. Um, great artists like Black Cherry Puppet Theater, which is still right across the street here, moved in, um, as did a number of restaurants. I remember one called uh, Mankin's Culture Pearl, which was really neat. Um, and uh, uh, over the years, uh, for sure, the market has had its ups and downs. But the city's public market authority, the group that uh, runs this market, along with uh, the other public markets in the city, um, uh, already has spruced up the exterior and is offering stalls for uh, new entrepreneurs. Um, and I'm pleased to say, very shortly, is planning to uh, put out a request for partners to restore this wonderful head house behind me. So I'm going to end by saying, if you haven't been here for a while, or if you've never been, come on down, uh, maybe uh, catch happy hour at the uh, still relatively new Mulberry's Bar, um, or take home some chicken from Chucky's Fried Chicken, which was recently voted the best in the state of Maryland. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.